Hey up everybody and welcome back to the Just The Driven YouTube channel. My name is Josh Bridges and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, we make car videos pretty much every single week about a whole variety of topics, car reviews, modifications to this particular car and in today's video, we're going to be talking about whether I regret buying this M140i. Stay tuned, let's get straight into it, let's get straight onto the road. Before we do anything or talk about anything to do with this car, I had to go and get a coffee. Um, it is Sunday morning, I can't function without coffee whatsoever, but now we've got that, we can get on the road and start talking about what this video is actually about. So we are actually in Leeds City Centre at the moment and we've come to do a little bit of Christmas and birthday shopping. And I thought this would be a pretty fun video to do, just explaining if I regret buying the M140i. And I think regret's quite a strong word to use. However, since owning the car, I think we bought it back in late January, early February, we've made quite a few changes. We've given the car a stage one remap, we've wrapped the car, we've unwrapped the car, we've taken out the resonators, we've done some changes on the interior, and there's plenty more where that came from. So it's fair to say that the car that was sat in today is completely different to the standard M140i. However, there are a couple of things that I wish I would have taken into consideration before buying this car, and one of them things is the spec that you can get. So the M140i's do come in a huge variety of specs. You've got Pro Nav, Harman Kardon, different coloured interiors, different trims and things like that. And this car hasn't got any of that. It's got the color red interior, it's got the standard business nav, it's not got Harman Kardon or anything like that. So that's the first thing that I wish I would have done a little bit more research on before buying this car, purely because I would have wanted the car with Harman Kardon, the bigger screen, and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, that's just a small issue that isn't going to stop me from wanting this car. I will never ever get bored of that. We're just going to close the window up because there's a couple more things that I want to talk about and one of them things comes in the package of an M2. So when I was looking at buying an M140i, I had the opportunity to buy an M2. Now this particular M2 had just been stolen, which is unfortunate. However, the owner was looking to get rid of it. And funnily enough, the owner is my boss at work. Now he was going to give him that car at a fairly good price after looking at what the part exchanges would have given him. Um, and I passed up on the opportunity and just before he got rid of it I bought this M140i. It was a very nicely spec car so it had the M performance back box with the Bluetooth control in the back of the car. It was mineral grey the same as my M140i. It had the carbon interior. It didn't have the carbon exterior pack which is something you could have added on anyway. Uh, but in general it was a low mileage, decently sorted OG M2. Now I do kind of regret missing out on that opportunity simply because I love the M2s and it's only since that I've had this M140i that my love for the M2 has grown massively. And it's a very, very, very good contender for the next car for this channel and it might be coming slightly sooner than we think. However, not in the immediate future. We're going to be sticking with the M140i. We've got a few plans to take care of with this particular car before this car goes anywhere. And I know there's going to be some people sat there thinking, well, Josh, you can make this into a mini M car by adding a diff, adding coilovers, adding the underbody brace, adding sort of, you know, chassis strengthening in general, lightweight wheels, adding more power. But I don't think this car will ever be an M car. And that's something that I've had to come to terms with over the ownership of this car. I came into buying this M140i thinking that you could make a mini M car, you know, adding a bit of chassis strengthening, adding a bit of stiffness. But at the end of the day, the M2 and the M140i were built from the ground up to be completely different cars. I would say that the M140i is a little bit of a warm hatch, simply because cars like the Civic Type R, the new Focus ST, the i30N all have better chassis than the M140i does. And I think a lot of owners will agree with me, when you're pushing on in a car like that, especially if it's stage one and stage two, it feels a little bit wallowy. It goes side to side a lot and not sort of power sliding or drifting or anything like that. It just sort of floats along. Um, and it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. And I think that is one of the key reasons why I regret buying the M140i, is because I passed up on an opportunity to buy an M2. And now I'm in a position where I could buy an M2 as the next car, um, but I don't know whether having this car will take away from getting the M2, if that makes sense. You know, if you'd have asked me when I had my GT86, would I have taken an M2? Then the answer would have been yes, of course, absolutely 110%. 
but I'm a little bit worried now because if I go from the M140i to the OG M2 which has the N55 engine am I then going to regret that choice is it going to be too similar to this car yes the driving dynamics are completely different the engine's different the way the chassis is set up is completely different but the interior and the way it looks is fairly similar to what we've got here and the absolute last situation that i want to be in is to go and get rid of the m140i which is a car that you can pick up for around twenty thousand pounds and by the way these are incredible value for money to then go and spend an extra ten thousand pounds on an m2 to have the shine taken off my first m car ownership simply because i've owned this car and that's not to say that we are done with the m140i because we are nowhere near finished with this particular car we've got stage two to do we've got to get to 500 brake horsepower and i'm still undecided as to which route i'm going to take to actually get there we've got an exciting series of videos coming which is a battle of the tire titans so we're going to be pitting up the michelin pilot sport 4 and the eagle f1 super sport to find out what the best daily road tire is going to be for performance cars we've got the car going into ultimate customs towards back end of the year to get a different wrap done and we're also working with ultimate customs to give you guys who own the f20 and the f21 some more options when it comes to aesthetic modifications now aesthetic modifications such as splitters diffusers side skirts mirror caps interior pieces um, just to give you guys some more options when you're looking to spice your F20 or F21s up. So in summary then, do I regret buying the M140i? I think the answer to that question is a definite no. But do I regret missing out on the opportunity to buy an M2? The answer to that question is a definite yes. But I want to know what your thoughts are on whether moving from an M140i to an M2 is going to be a move that I'm going to regret. Is it going to take the shine off M car ownership purely because I've had a similar car in the past? Let me know down in the comments. But I've got some shopping to do. It's incredibly cold. It's incredibly windy up here. So apologies if you have heard some wind noise. But catch me next time in the next video. And I'll see you guys soon.